Okay, so Pi News episode 35, and I've got a new USB SATA cable which I'm trying out, which is a U green one, which was recommended to me from the comments. Uh, but I've also got other USB SATAs. I'm going to do a separate video on that. Let's switch over to screen capture. So first up, a story from a few months ago, but it showed up on my feed and uh, it looks exactly the sort of thing I put in Pi News. I've done a check and I haven't included this before. Uh, this is a Raspberry Pi Zero inside an iPod Classic. Turns it into a Spotify music player and uh, it's really impressive. So you can see the Pi Zero in here and uh, the various different components together. And if we scroll down through, looks like it took a lot of work. You can see the display attached to a separate board. And uh, you can see this breadboard here where all the testing was involved. And further down, a few more images with the battery and various things. And it says here, Guy managed to use the font for the music library that looks almost exactly the same as Apple's original. And it does look great. And it's using Spotify via Raz Spotify. Uh, so it's a few months old, but uh, yeah, definitely worth a look at. Next up was another story, uh, which is from a while ago. Uh, this is a Raspberry Pi Pi Hat projector for your Pi. So it's actually a projector that sits on top of the Pi, and it was reviewed by Tom's Hardware. And if we scroll down, it was $267, so it wasn't cheap. Uh, in fact, let's see if the price has changed. So if I search for that. There's the website, 166.66 it says there, out of stock, but that's a probably similar price in pounds to what it was in dollars. Yes, there's no price on there. Um, but uh, well, it looks like there's still information, so you can email for restocking. So it fits on the GPIO pins, it projects a 720p picture, so an HD picture, not full HD, but 150 inches uh, up to three meters away. And if we scroll down, there is an image of it being projected there you go always hard to take a photo of something uh, projected but uh, yeah something a little bit different next up i've very kindly been sent some of these micro sd card holders so let's go in a bit closer so i can show you what they're like so michael curry had sent me a message uh, after watching the last video on the one gig pi i could not help but notice the sd card mess on your desk i'd like to send you something to help with that if you wouldn't mind it's nothing spectacularly amazing uh, they're actually pretty cool um, and it's, they hold them in really well. I thought that it would be like a really secure uh, fix. You can hear that they rattle around when they're in there. But if I then open it up, all of the cards are in place. Uh, and basically they just, they just slot in and out very simply. Uh, if I show you one without cards in it. So basically you just poke through the bottom and take your card out. So it's really quick and easy to take a micro SD card in and out. This is a single one. And uh, this is a double one, you can see, and there's a full-size SD slot there as well. And these are all 3D printed, uh, and the design is on Thingiverse, and I'll show that in a minute. And this is the triple, this is the one I'm using because I have so many micro SD cards. And uh, I've got some more which I've got to test for various different videos, uh, which I haven't opened up yet. And as Michael mentioned, this design was available on Thingiverse, I thought I'd have a look. Uh, I was going to be sent a 3D printer at one point, but as you can see, some of them are pretty large. And uh, when I looked into it more, uh, the company never got back to me. They said they'd send it. I said yes, sent the address and everything, and it never arrived. But I'm in some sense relieved because 3D printers are quite large, and I wouldn't really know where to put it. And the printing took about five hours for the triple, four hours for the double, and three hours for the single. So they do take a long time. And obviously they make a certain amount of noise as well. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't really think I personally need a 3D printer. I don't think I'd use it enough for the amount of space that it would take up. But I do think they're very cool. And I hadn't realized how great Thingiverse was for just being able to get ideas and see what other people are doing and things like that. So you can see this one, Swiss Army style SD holder. Looks pretty cool. Threaded SD holder. Uh, if we scroll down through, you can see just a very basic little box that the SD cards can slot into. Some here that take full size. And also, obviously, the full size would be an adapter as well would fit into that because they're exactly the same size. This has got some inserts uh, and they look like they spring into place. They've got some sort of end bits here that look like they move. Uh, and if we switch over, oh, this bottom left one here as well, it's got sort of spiral design. Loads of micro SDs on this one, but obviously if you knock it over, they're going everywhere. Uh, might be good with the lid. 
that we've got batteries and all sorts of other things on here as well. And I thought this one was cool. This is an Altoids case, uh, so peppermint tin, and uh, you slot the plastic in, but it's really nice snug fit. I did do a bit of reading in it, and it really slots in. It's quite a firm fitting when you put it in there. Uh, but this is the 3D printed bit. But I'm very pleased with the solution I've got. So thanks very much, Michael. Very kind of you to send it to me. It's much appreciated. And uh, I'll see if I can fill all three of them up uh, as soon as I can. Next up, bit of software. Uh, so Jose has done another PyKiss video. So Jose is the creator of PyKiss. And there's so many amazing things in PyKiss. And the most recent one is RetroArch. So he's managed to install RetroArch into Raspberry Pi OS just as usual with PyKiss with one click. Uh, and so if you go through the video, he also plays a few games and things in here as well, but shows the setup procedure, but it is super easy with PyKiss. I've got some other videos on PyKiss, it is great. And RetroArch is very configurable, really nice way of playing retro games on a Raspberry Pi, uh, very customizable, very easy to change settings and things like that in RetroArch. And N64 performance look pretty good. So quite a decent frame rate there. Next up uh, was a really interesting one uh, in Petapixel. 3D printed cartridge turns any 35mm film camera into a digital camera. And uh, you can see, again, loads of great images. There's a separate YouTube video on this. I'll put a link to this story in the description. But it's an old style 35mm camera which can take stills and video. And you can see it's a Raspberry Pi Zero inside it. And it's a really impressive project. You can see it there showing on a laptop. Next up was such a weird story in Tom's hardware, but very cool. Uh, programmer turns Raspberry Pi CPU into a button. So you stick your finger on the CPU and it registers it as a press. So you could use it for loads of different things. Uh, but basically it's registering the heat from your finger on the CPU. And it's just such a weird thing to do uh, that I just thought it was interesting. So you can see the CPU showing here and uh, you put your finger on the top, it registers it, and then you can get the Pi to do something. Uh, and so it's basically using it like a button or a switch. And next up is to do with Windows 10 or Windows 11 on Raspberry Pi. So I've got a playlist where I've created loads of videos on how to get Windows 10 and Windows 11 running on a Raspberry Pi. So this was episode 32, which was the Windows 11 one. And all of the videos, apart from possibly one, because there was an image, there was a pre-built image, which was available for a little while, but uh, you're not allowed to do that. And so uh, that method is out. But this looks like it's an official method. It's on the WOR site, and they're the ones who create the WOR tool. And it shows you how to install from other OSs. Now, I haven't done a video on this because I looked through and there are loads and loads of steps. And I didn't see how I could simplify it. And really, you probably would go through this and have the web page open and just copy and paste every bit of script into it. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's really nice to see that uh, if you haven't got a Windows device, a Windows 10 computer, then you can still get Windows 10 on a Raspberry Pi just by following those instructions. Now I showed PyKiss, uh, I ought to show PyApps as well, and I figured I'd have a look through because there is updates constantly for PyApps. There's always new things being added. It is, you definitely need this. If you've got a Raspberry Pi, you definitely need PyApps. Uh, and one of the things I was gonna put on here, uh, which just looked interesting, and I thought I'd do it as part of this video, Conkey rings. Uh, so Conkey is basically something that displays various different usage and things like that. Uh, and so Conkey rings animated gauges and graphs of your system on your desktop. I thought it'd be worth a look. So let's hit install. Uh, so it's come up with an error, uh, and that's because one of the Twister themes uh, already has the rings on it, thinking about it. PyApps and PyKiss are both designed for Raspberry Pi OS, um, but Twister OS is based on Raspberry Pi OS. So let's close that down. And uh, let's just change the theme to the one with, I guess this is what Conkey Rings is. So we go for Light Twister OS. You can see that it's switched, enter to continue. And this must be what Conkey Rings is, uh, so you can see on the side. But I'm gonna have a look in Raspberry Pi OS. So let's shut this down and reboot with Raspberry Pi OS and have a look on that. So here we are in Raspberry Pi OS, and I've done a bit of customizing on this operating system, but it is Raspberry Pi OS. So let's go for Pi Apps, Eye Candy, Conky Rings, and install. There you go. So it's doing it normally now. It didn't come up with the error. It's great that it comes up with the error, it detects it, knows it's there, and doesn't go any further. 
Okay, so it looks it looks very different to the one in Twister. Uh, so it isn't the same. And if I right click on it, it doesn't it doesn't give you access to that. So I don't know how you change this. I suppose we can have a look and see if there's anything conky on here. The Pi system tools. Yeah, I can't see any configuration on there, but I do like it. But what I would probably end up doing is changing my background um, to be able to match it. So maybe put something with a black background. As I say, I don't know if it is configurable, but uh, if I want to uninstall that, uh, because it doesn't match that particular background, then I can go back to Pi Apps and you can see there's an uninstall option here as well. So actually quite good for if I'm using it to, to test various things about speed, uh, and temperature and things like that and I want a display on there all the time. Uh, it's quite handy to be able to call that up but I don't necessarily want it there all the time so I'm going to uninstall it and it's disappeared and you can see uninstall Conky Rings closing in 30 seconds. Such a great product Pi Apps. And I was going to mess about with the SATA cables but I've run out of time today uh, but I think probably what I'll do is do that in a separate video which is about SATA cables uh, because I want to go through and do a comparison but I also had a couple of tips that may help my 1 gig Raspberry Pi 4 uh, because it wasn't booting from USB uh, or only on some cables it was much less compatible than the Raspberry Pi 4 4 gig and 8 gig I found that the 2 and the 1 weren't booting on some operating systems with some cables for me whereas they do on the 4 and the 8 which is a bit weird anyway let's go back into stories uh, so this was a story covered by Tom's Hardware, uh, Fenix Linux streams YouTube full screen on Raspberry Pi 4. It was in fact my last video and I was very pleased to see if I scrolled down that they linked my video and mentioned my video as well. So I forwarded this to Ruben who's the creator of Fenix Linux and uh, he's really pleased. He's definitely very pleased with all the great feedback. There was loads of really good comments in there. Uh, he's created a really nice operating system for the Pi. So uh, yeah, it's great to see the recognition there. And last one is nothing to do with the Pi really, but I can use it on the Pi. So I'm running Raspberry Pi OS from an SD card now because I switched over to do that Conkey Linux. So if I go down to the link, is it this one, Windows96.net? It runs Windows 96 in your browser and uh, there's even Doom in there. And I haven't done the Doom bit yet because I figured I'd wait to try it. And I'm using a touchpad, which is not going to be very good. But uh, you can see it's starting up Windows 96 wasn't a thing, uh, but it's a browser-based uh, operating system that is supposed to be like Windows 95. So let's see what happens. Let's see how it works. I have tried this on my Mac a little bit, but I figured I'd try it on the Pi. Okay, so it takes a while to boot up, but here it is. Uh, can I go full screen here? Yeah, there we go. So now <laughs> it looks like I'm running Windows 95, 96. Uh, and you can see programs, accessories, developers, entertainment, and some of these things actually work. So whatever blocks is, yeah, seems to be starting up and start. And so, yeah, this is like Minecraft, uh, but running through the browser, emulating an operating system. So if I hit escape, now we can put it in a, in a little window and then we can close it down. Let's have a look again. So anything in the documents? There is a picture of a cat. <laughs> right, interesting. But it is like you're using someone else's computer. Gaming with an E, uh, package manager, report bug, settings. All of this looks very Windows, about Windows 96. Anyway, I won't go through all of it uh, because obviously it's good for you to try this yourself and, and see what little interesting bits are in there but yeah that that is just so cool and to think this is running on a raspberry pi from an sd card i think that's pretty impressive so let's uh f11 to come out of full screen and you can see that is just the browser running in raspberry pi os okay so i hope all this helps thanks very much for watching please like and subscribe